Yeah, I think every woman in country music probably had a little bit of fear when when that voice came out. I sometimes feel like in country music we we are you know kind of like the border, a little too wide open. You know, yeah. we just everybody's everybody come on in. You know, take me back twenty years ago. Do you remember where you were the exact first time you heard Redneck Woman on the radio? I do. Let's hear it. They had repossessed my vehicle that morning the guy was nice enough though to because you know you don't get no money until you're out there touring so the song comes out and you're still sitting there penniless <laughs> and so the car it was a little red rodeo and it was uh Azuzu. yes yeah, and it yeah. was repossessed but the guy was nice enough he took it at 4 a.m and he um he knocked on the door because there was a child seat in the back and he didn't want to take off with my car seat so he let me get the car seat out wasn't that nice wow. of him? um and when i started the car as he was getting ready to hook it up, Redneck Woman was playing on the radio. Stop yep. it. Yep. For the first time you That's heard it? That's the first time I heard it on the radio and when my car was being repossessed and I was getting the child seat out of the back. <laughs> and I immediately right. called my brother uh, back home in Illinois because he said, it's you know pipe dream. This is never going to happen for you. Get a real job. <laughs> what? Yeah. And, That's uh, crazy. He was in tears. He was like, I heard it. I heard it too. What did, you have, it up here. what did you say to the tow truck driver? He's probably like, whatever. Yeah. yeah he didn't. I don't think he believed me. I was <laughs> I like, That's me on the radio. No, like, no. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I want to take you back to CMA Fest when you were on stage with Ashley McBride. Wow. What was, uh, like, in, did you enjoy that moment? Oh, I mean, who wouldn't? First of all, I had, we, Ashley and I had phone tag a couple of times talking about getting together to write. Uh, we never did make that happen. And so our first real experience around each other was that uh, oh, wow. CMA night. And um, she's exactly who I thought she was going to be. Uh, I was I was so impressed with her. She's funny. She's got a just a, an amazing just presence being around her. I, I, I love everything about her. And I can't imagine having done that and reintroduce myself to that crowd with anyone but her. And um, so we're definitely going to get together and write. And now that we've made that connection, you know, I think that we're off to the races as far as what we might be able to do together. Okay. Did you, do you like see anything in her that you saw in another artist, like say 20 years ago? No, I don't. I, I think she's very unique. I think Ashley is, uh, is really uniquely herself. She's, she's um, maybe me. Maybe me. I, I think I see a little bit of myself okay. in her, but like I, I don't, I don't know that I could say that there's anybody else that I think she's like. She's, uh, well, she's um, a force to be reckoned with, and and maybe people were saying that about me back in the day. You know, I, I really don't. I know. would say so. I think the coolest thing about this twenty year later thing was just uh, the media that I did at, uh, for the CMA Fest, um, watching some of the younger artists walk by me. And whispering and going, that's her, that's the redneck woman, that's Gretchen Wilson. And then they would almost like bow to me, you know. And I I was looking over my shoulder. Who are they? Who's here? You know, who are they talking about? And it took me a minute to realize, oh, they're talking about me. You know, and that was me 20 years ago walking around going, oh, my God, you know, there's so-and-so and there's so-and-so. And it was like, oh, my, th that's, that's, they're talking about me. And I remember saying in one of the interviews, you know, this is strange and it's kind of a new shoe to right, wear right. but i'm gonna make it fit you know i mean i'm just so happy to be here and to still be relevant 20 years later there's not many of us that get to say that there was another artist that had something to say about you recently um that actually stopped by i wanted to play that for you to be really honest it was like i kind of felt like i was just doing my own thing for the longest time we all compete for for radio airplay at that time you know we're all competing I remember hearing Redneck Woman for the first time and I went, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> that one kind of got me a little bit. I'm like, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a hit though. And I love huge, Gretchen. Yeah. I'm really happy for her. But yeah, that was that was kind of a whoo. Wow, I better strap on my seatbelt. Here she comes. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, um, and I love Terry. You know, she's, <laughs> we hit it off right off the bat, and that's really sweet of her to say that. But I'm, you know, I had those moments, I, you know, whenever Carrie Underwood came along, I was, oh boy, you know, and, and we've had several of them, but, you know, we all support each other. Terry brought um, my first time playing the Ryman. She brought me like four bottles of whiskey and a whole case of skull. <laughs> That's awesome. So she must not have disliked me too much. 
I want to talk about Carrie Underwood. So, did you feel the way Terry felt about you toward Carrie Underwood? Um, I think, yeah, I think every woman in country music probably had a little bit of fear when when that voice came out. I mean, she's a, also a force to be reckoned with. Just powerhouse of a singer but i didn't i didn't have that i I don't know that i had i was very fearful just because we're so different okay Uh, i felt like okay she's gonna own that that uh slicker side of country music and so that just kind of made me want to get rougher okay you know is it more difficult to be authentic in 2024 than it was 20 years ago (laughs) i think it's difficult to be anything (laughs) It's more difficult to be anything in 2024. I'm not even sure what language I'm allowed to use anymore. I, I, I just come from such a backwards sort of a family, you know, absolute, you know, people like, are, were there racists in your family? Yes, of course there was. You know, I mean, my grandpa hated everybody that wasn't exactly like him. Mm. I mean, so I don't even know if you call that racist. He was just so completely closed off. Ignorance is what I call that because he never went anywhere. He didn't know anybody. He was not worldly, you know, so... um. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I think uh, this the times are pretty nuts right now. Um, I try to be as politically correct as I can everywhere I go, but I got to be honest, the whole I don't know whether I'm calling you a they or a he or a she, I, that part is just beyond me. I'm fine with it, but you're going to have to be consistent. You're going to have to wake up every day and be the same person or else don't get upset with me when I don't get it right because you changed your mind from yesterday to today. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, I don't know how to be anything other than authentic. That's fair. And that's what I'm going to stay being. And what I would, I think if we lived in a world where we could just be a little bit nicer to each other, if you make a mistake, look, if you want to be called this, I'm fine with that. But if I make a mistake, don't hate on me. Just say that's incorrect. You know, what mistakes would you say new artists are making nowadays? Do you see like a common mistake? Ooh, um, I mean, for me, and maybe it's because I'm an old lady, I'm 51 years old. I I feel like that they share too much. I feel like everybody, there's no exclusivity to to being um, an artist anymore because everybody shares everything about themselves. And, and, And maybe I just feel like I'm too boring, but you will not see me on my social. I only say things when there's something to be said. I'm not like getting up going, well, today I'm going to do this. And, okay. gonna, you know, I just... It's like, I am not that important, you know, and people have lives to live. <laughs> so, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I feel like people share too much. Okay. Um, now let's talk about like artists that come over to country. There's been a lot of that recently, like uh, Post Malone is one of the newer ones. How do you feel about that? There's some that come over that make it, like Darius Rucker. There's some that come over that don't make it. Right. What's the difference and how do you feel about Ooh, it? I mean, that's a really tough question. Um, I sometimes feel like in country music, we've, we're, you know, kind of like the border, a little too wide open. You know, yeah. we just, everybody's, everybody, come on in, you know, we're going to, you know, I do, I, I get that feeling. But then there's other moments where I'm like, I'm so glad that country music is so all encompassing and that we have so much of a variety for people to listen to. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things, like if you don't like this song, well, you're, you'll turn it off. You'll find another one that you do like. But country music has become so wide that there, if you can't find some part of country music that you like, well, there's kind of something wrong with you. Yeah, I mean, There's it, like subgenres now. There yeah. is. There yeah. is. And, and, and I may fit into one little piece of that. But as far as I can see, there's still an audience for that one little sliver of country music. It is a song that I wrote with the same... Two Nashville amazing country songwriters that I wrote Homewrecker with. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a continuation of that story. I would say that it's definitely the same type of girl, the same type of chick that we all love to hate. Um, you know, the one that just comes in just, you know, she just walks in the door ready to ruin your night. She got, she got dressed to ruin your night, you know, to, to just to, to make your life just miserable. And we all have a friend like that. We all know sometimes it's us, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's us that has to get mopped up off the floor and carried out to the cab. So um, we all know one um, and she's a pain in the, you know what, but we all still love her and we all take care of her. So it's, it's, it's that kind of a story getting ready to film a video on it um, in a couple of weeks. So um, have that to look forward to. And hopefully the video then will give more of a, of a coloring and a, and a description of what really is going on in that song. Okay. Where are you headed like next musically, like in this direction or what's like, yeah, I mean, I think there's always been one direction for me. I, I love all kinds of music. I think people would even be surprised if they knew what I listened to when I'm, at, Let's you know, hear it. Well, Let's I mean, hear. sometimes I just turn on the mellow, mellow classic rock and roll, you know, and I listen to some old classic rock when I'm cleaning the house and that kind of stuff. And other times I'll turn it on like, you know, big band. And just, you know, 
and I, I live with my four dogs, um, and they know I'm crazy. It's okay. I, you know, I dance around and in my pajamas and sing to them. I've, I've got songs that I've made up just for them, you know, like stinky doodle dandy doggy puppies. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's, That's it's a, a regular, it's a regular, regular old crazy lady's life, you know, but yeah, so much going on. I'm, Musically, I think I'll stay, you know, even though I love all different genres of music, when I open my mouth, it comes out hillbilly. So that's probably what. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably what I'll stick with. That. with that. Yeah. Yeah.